things like what the fuel is, what the time limit is, the cause of stopping the byproducts. Remember we made that little table in class. See if you can kind of remember the components that go in the table. Uh, what's the fuel for the ATP PCR energy system? Is there a little bit of ATP stored in your muscle? Yeah, a little bit, but then what's the other big fuel for that energy system? It's phosphocreatine. Remember, creatine phosphate, it's a creatine with a high energy phosphate attached to it. Its only purpose is to be a storage form for that high energy phosphate. And when would you utilize this energy system? ATP, PC energy system. When would it be a primary fuel source for muscular activity? During what type of exercise? Uh, very short term explosive type exercise bouts. Uh, doing a 100 meter dash, throwing a shot put, um, you know, getting up and going across the room very quickly. That sort of, of situation you would use that energy system. Uh, if you were to only use the ATP and the phosphocreatine that's stored in your muscles, about how long could you exercise for maximally? How, how, how long would that energy system be able to provide energy? Okay, yeah, your book says 3 to 15 seconds somewhere in there. And it depends a little bit on training and genetics and so forth, but 3 to 15 seconds, so it's very short. Okay, what's the cause of stopping? In other words, why does that energy system only provide ATP for that very short period of time? Because you'll run out of phosphocreatine. Once you run out of phosphocreatine, this energy system cannot provide you any more ATP and you got to get it from somewhere else. Uh, as far as byproducts, there really aren't any any byproducts that we're concerned about. With glycolysis, what's the primary fuel for glycolysis? Does glycolysis use fat as an energy source, as a fuel? No, just glucose or glycogen. And what is glycogen? It's the definition. It's glucose molecules linked together in a long chain. When you store carbohydrate in your body, you'll store it as glycogen. What are the two primary places in your body that you'll store glycogen? Two primary places. Skeletal muscle and your liver. Those are the two primary places. Which one stores more? Skeletal muscle by far. Liver is a much smaller source, but you can store a decent amount there. Um, let's see. How, if I was to exercise uh, as quickly as I could, let's say I'm doing a, for example, like a wing gate test on the bike, that high intensity cycle, about how long could this energy system provide ATP? How long? Ballpark. 40%. Yeah, the, the number I give in class is about 45 seconds, give or take, say, 10 or 15 seconds on either side. Okay, now with the ATP PC energy system, the reason that it was that short amount of time is we ran out of one of our fuel, our phosphocreatine. What's our fuel for glycolysis? Our fuel is glucose, right? Do we run out of glucose in this, say, 45 second all out energy, energy expenditure? We don't run out of glucose, so there's another cause of fatigue. And this one is what? It is essentially acid accumulation, your pH falls. What's the primary byproduct of deriving ATP from glycolysis? It is lactic acid production is the primary cause. Okay, so we don't run out of fuel, we essentially have this big drop in pH, which is the same thing, big accumulation of acid. How does a high acid level cause fatigue? What's the mechanism of why a high acidity level causes muscular fatigue, causes contractile failure of the muscles? And again, this is debatable, but what do we talk about? You say it interferes with the calcium. Yeah, one of the things is it interferes with calcium release and uptake and processing within the skeletal muscle that causes actual contractile failure. That's one of the mechanisms that's believed to happen. The other one has to do with ATP generation. Okay, remember a high acidity level impairs the PFK enzyme in glycolysis. Remember that? 
glycolysis is a series of reactions. And one of the early ones is a, a process that utilizes PFK as an enzyme, phosphofructokinase. Okay, when pH gets very low, that enzyme stops working. When that enzyme stops working, the whole glycolysis reaction slows down or stops, and ATP is made further down the line in the steps of the reactions. So glycolysis stops making ATP. Okay, last energy system was oxidative. What are the fuels? Carbohydrate? Yes. What about fat? Yes. Yes. What about protein? Yes, it could. Okay. Uh, what are the byproducts of deriving energy, or ATP, from the oxidative energy system? There are two. One is CO2, the other is water. Okay. Uh, time limit. If I were to exercise at a low to moderate intensity, okay, and I had plenty of water, I was highly motivated, what eventually would cause fatigue, contractile failure of the muscles? Eventually. I would run out of run out of glycogen. Run out of stored muscle glycogen. And when that happens, you have problems. Okay, have you ever heard of a marathoner hitting the wall? That's what happens. Uh, how long ballpark could you derive energy from the oxidative energy system before this happened at a moderate continuous level? Ballpark? Two to three hours. To three hours. Okay. And is it possible to exercise longer than that? If I started walking, could I exercise longer? Sure, but eventually I'd have to I'd have to eat. Okay. And specifically what would I have to eat? Carbohydrates because I'd be running out of glucose. Okay, uh, concepts of VO2 max lactate threshold economy. What if I said define lactate threshold? Define lactate threshold. Who wants to take a crack at somebody? A state where lactic acid is being removed at the same speed as being produced. Okay, and when you said the state, uh, one thing I always try to implore on people is to say that, it, that lactate threshold is a workload or a pace where lactate production equals lactate removal. Okay, I, I'm, I'm kind of a sticker to make sure you specify that it's a workload or a pace. Okay, because um, that's how you would actually define it if I was wanting to say what is your lactate threshold. Well, your lactate threshold is running at eight minutes a mile or it's 150 workloads, 150, work, 150 watts of workload on the bike. Okay. Uh, how about economy? If I said define economy from a physiological sense. A person is more economical if they consume less oxygen at any given workload. Okay, let's try this. Um, Let's say that uh, Mary has a VO2 max of 50 mLs per kg per minute, and uh, Susie has a VO2 max of 75 mLs per kg per minute. So one's 50, one's 75. Who would likely win a 5K run this weekend? The person who had a VO2 max of 50 or the one who had a VO2 max of 75? Well, the answer is you can't. From th that data alone, you still can't really say. It might be more likely that the person with the 75 would win, but there's other factors besides VO2 max that influence performance, such as lactate threshold or economy or, or even more than that. Uh, with VO2 max, what are the units on absolute VO2 max? What are the units? Liters per minute. Liters per minute. And relative VO2 max would be mLs per kg per minute. Uh, give me a value for, let's say, an elite female athlete uh, for VO2 max. Elite female athlete for VO2 max. I'd say above 60 mLs per kg per minute would be considered elite. How about a normal value for a male? A normal, untrained, moderately trained, healthy male ballpark. I'd say 45, somewhere in there, give or take a few for a normal 